After watching this video, you should be able to describe the basic framework for understanding the autonomic nervous system anatomy. So to turn our attention to a schematic of the autonomic nervous system anatomy, and we're going to focus on two important neurons we find in the autonomic nervous system. Now remember, neurons have some essential parts. They have a cell body, or soma, they have an axon, and they have a nerve terminal. And that nerve terminal is going to be releasing neurotransmitters from vesicles onto a receptor. So that's the considerations that we're going to have for these neurons. So the first one on the left here, in pink, the somas are found in the central nervous system, which is considered brain and spinal cord. And when we have cell bodies, or somas, found in the central nervous system, they are part of what's called a nucleus or plural nuclei. The second neuron here, its cell bodies or somas are found in the peripheral nervous system, which is considered outside the brain and spinal cord. And when we have a collection of somas or cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system, they are part of a ganglia. So this first neuron, since it's before the ganglia, it's considered a preganglionic neuron. The second neuron, its cell body is in the ganglia, but then it comes out of the ganglia and goes to an effector organ. Those neurons are called postganglionic neurons. And the preganglionic neurons have myelinated axons, and the postganglionic neurons have unmyelinated axons. Now, if you notice, the first synapse here that we're showing, between the pre- and postganglionic neuron, there is a neurotransmitter released and binds to a ligand-gated excitatory cation channel. That's always true for the autonomic nervous system synapses between the pre- and post-ganglionic neurons. It's always going to be a neurotransmitter binding to a ligand-gated excitatory cation channel. Now that's going to excite the post-ganglionic neuron. It's going to fire an action potential, send it down the axon to the nerve terminal through an increased influx of calcium, increased release of a neurotransmitter from a vesicle onto what we call an effector organ. And when we're dealing with the autonomic nervous system, the effector organs that we are considering are cardiac cells of the electrical system and the myocytes, smooth muscle cells, and secretory glands. These are the major effector organs of the autonomic nervous system, and they're going to be getting a neurotransmitter from the postganglionic neuron to bind to a receptor that's of a seven transmembrane spanning type. And remember, seven transmembrane spanning receptors are the G protein coupled receptor family. And this junction between the postganglionic nerve terminal and the effector organ is called a neuroeffector junction. So I want to point out one other important feature of this anatomy, and that is that the preganglionic neurons, they have to get input from other neurons. And this is going to be either from what we call descending tracts or pre-preganglionic neurons. And there's a lot of other neurons that are involved in reflexes that control the autonomic nervous system through inputs on the preganglionic neurons. So it's important to recognize that the preganglionic neuron, even though it's shown as the first neuron here in this picture, there's other neurons that have to have inputs onto those preganglionic neurons to regulate the activity of the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the ANS. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at the differences between the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions with respect to the pre- and postganglionic neurons what kind of neurotransmitters and receptors are used, and where those nuclei and ganglia are located. And that concludes this video on the autonomic nervous system anatomy framework.